about another thing I was talking about, another thing I was talking about, another thing I was talking about, another thing I was talking about. We have to talk about Pink Pantress, her new album, Heaven Knows, that just dropped, right? Um, this might be a contender for me for album of the year. She absolutely delivered. This might be a contender for album of the year for me. And there's not a lot this year. Like, I think I mentioned maybe Diddy's album. Um, I think I might have mentioned Caroline uh, Palachek's album. There might be not that many really this year that have been really you know standouts. So a lot of them have been kind of underwhelming, but Pink Pantress's album Heaven Knows absolutely special. Number one, number one thing to kind of point out about it is just the the concise nature of it, right? Just really short album, thirteen tracks, um, no real no real fluff. Um, everything is kind of very 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 well considered in terms of a track listing and if i'm not mistaken i think i think if i'm not mistaken it falls under like i think it falls under like 40 minutes i think total runtime i'm checking on my phone yeah is it yeah it's 34 minutes actually it's even shorter than that so it's a 34 minute album and for some reason it doesn't feel like it it takes you on such different journeys, um, different sort of, you know, sounds and sonics and vibes and moods and textures and stuff. It's just, it really does take you on a journey. And it honestly doesn't feel like a 34 minute um, length album. It definitely does feel a little bit longer. The tracks, even though some of them are super short in length, they feel really full. They go in all different, different directions. Personally, I think sonically, um, the beats are incredible. You get that kind of Y2K pop whispering tinge thing that she does but they all the tracks sound different you know and i think that's something you have to kind of give credit to her and everyone you know of course compare her to a collaborator um what you call it ice spice who's you know responsible for one of her biggest records but i think that's what they both do really well just thinking about off the top of my head they both make very they both make very distinctive music that's kind of in their lane their kind of style right obviously ice spice has that drill sound and um Pink Panthers has got the whole Y2K aesthetic and sound going on with the pop melodies and shit. But what I feel like they do really well is that they make all the tracks sound different. And I think even maybe Olivia Rodrigo does that as well with her kind of pop records. They've got a way of like making the same track, but in different ways on each different album that they put out. So it never sounds boring. It kind of sounds fresh. It's a really interesting way to do it. I don't, I know it doesn't really make any sense, but in my head it's making sense because you think of Ice Spice as like, she's made different versions of the same track she blew up from, but she's done them in different type of ways with different flows, different beats, maybe not different flows, different beats. Um, maybe they have, maybe different flows, different approach. I'm not really sure it is, but it always kind of sounds fresh to your ear. And I think Pim Pandras did the same thing with her album, Heaven Knows. It's absolutely incredible. And, Number one, the the title track just sets it off. And I think you have to give the lady a lot of credit for coming into the album or starting the album, coming into it, you know, pause on that one, but starting the album straight off the bat with a banger, right? Another Life featuring Rima. First of all, when I heard a track, I thought to myself, oh, you know who to destroy this? Destroy Lonely. Destroy Lonely would have killed this or yeet or somebody of that ilk, they would have absolutely destroyed it, or Ken Carson, they would have destroyed this as a feature, but I thought Rima did a good job, and oddly enough, he actually sounded like them anyway, so maybe he kind of, you know, achieved, um, he kind of killed two birds with one stone, so he had the ability to kind of flex his muscle, and show his range, and also, um, she could also collaborate with somebody that was a little bit, you know, outside maybe of her warehouse, but I thought Destroy Lonely, Ken Carson would have absolutely killed that opening track, Another Life, but I just love how she didn't start off with like a slow intro, she just came in straight off the bat, boom, let's go, 30 minute, you know, album, let's hit you over the head with it, so again, I think that takes a lot of bravery to do something like that, so big up her for that one, but my favourite track actually, oddly enough, on the entire album is the interlude, Internet Baby. I don't know why this gets me so much, but I fucking loved it. And I knew immediately when I saw it in the track list, I thought, you know what? I'm bet I'm gonna love this interlude. And I wanna wish this interlude just went forever and ever. So I actually did find some random person on SoundCloud that looped um the interlude, um, I think for like 30 minutes and shit. So I'm not the only person that fucking enjoys it. Um I thought Central C smashed his feature on the track Nice to Meet You before um on the track that I like, of course. I thought he did really well on that one. Um I really like Ophelia as well. That's a really good track. Um and if anything I love the bravery and I love the conviction of starting your album the way she did with Another Life with Rima. Again, we haven't heard any singles from her beforehand that sounded like this anyway. So it was kind of like a fresh way to kind of reintroduce yourself to people. And then she ended the album with the hit record Boys A Liar Part 2 um, with Ice Spice. So 
it wasn't like she tried to sonically slide it into the album to make it make sense and to you know inflate it no i'm gonna give you a look i'm gonna give you 12 of my tracks that i feel like better represent me as an artist because you have to imagine at this point she's probably tired and bored of fucking performing boy is a liar right it's probably doing her fucking nothing so you don't want to keep doing that same thing you don't want to become a mantra pony and also you think of yourself as a real true artist you have much more to offer so you know what i'm going to start my album off with these 12 tracks and then we're going to end it with a track that you know me from but i'm going to give you 12 different looks so you can realize that i'm that girl and she fucking did that i swear to god because this legitimately might be one of my album of the year contenders coming up and i can't wait to kind of recollect everything and go through all them and whatever else i mentioned before in the past obviously and give you my number one or maybe my top five of the year but there haven't been a lot of really good ones especially within the i don't know within the urban rap hip-hop r&b genre vault which is not really hip-hop r&b but still within that kind of you know um bubble there's not been a lot of really good albums this year so she definitely stands out with heaven knows so if you haven't seen it before please please do check it out it's called heaven knows by pink pantress and it's absolutely incredible and again like i said my favorite track on the album is definitely internet baby which i'll definitely play as my um what you're going to tune today at the end of the podcast so if you want to know that the tune of the day today is definitely going to be pink pantress the internet baby pink pantress internet baby but get the album now heaven knows available on all digital streaming platforms 